Welcome back guys to another episode of my Munching Gladback career on FIFA 15. There are just four games to go of the Bundesliga. In the last episode things weren't the best. We lost 3-1 against Frankfurt and we drew against Wolfsburg. As you can see we, we dropped down to third as Bayer Leverkusen. They've seriously played catch up here. They're now level on points. They're in second on goal difference. We've got to play Leverkusen next after this game against Hertha Berlin. So these last four games, they are so, so crucial for Mönchengladbach if we want to be playing Champions League football for next season. I made a few changes to the Mönchengladbach side for the away trip to Hertha Berlin, especially the formation went with the 4-4-1-1, so I had Hazard in that number 10 role, the central attack in mid position. Kramer started alongside Nigel de Jong in central midfield, and I also started Hessel in goal for Mönchengladbach after Sommer dropped to the bench after some poor performances as of late he's just he's conceded quite a few goals as well as just performing really bad it's been very uh, I suppose you could say nervy when playing the game when the opposition are attacking our goal it's just sitting on the edge of your seat sort of moment with uh, Sommer so I thought I'd give Hessel a chance in this game against Hertha Berlin plus he was asking for some first team football as well which I actually promised him when I first signed him up in the uh, the summer we had a decent start to the game against Hertha Berlin 15 minutes in we had already had oh I don't know maybe four or five decent efforts on goal we eventually broke the deadlock though with a goal from Nigel de Jong pushing forwards and breaking through for Borussia Mönchengladbach it was pretty sweet how it came about as well. Patrick Herman like running across Nigel de Jong's path, like distracting the keeper. There was just so much going on. He had to keep his eyes on everything. And it would be Nigel de Jong to finally pull the trigger. Now Hertha Berlin, as you can see, just mounting on that pressure. Had so many bodies in the area. They came up short there with that shot as it just goes wide. And Stocker, who I've been keeping an eye on. I thought about maybe making a bid for him in the summer. We'll just have to see what happens there but Stocker unchallenged struck the ball and found the back of the net it was totally out of the reach of Hessel couldn't do anything about it it was struck with such venom that's what I like to see from a player someone that can absolutely smash the ball we almost got the lead here with uh, Kramer with the header beat the keeper but it bounced off the crossbar so unfortunate so the game stood at 1-1 Nigel de Jong did very well there to cut out that attack from Hertha Berlin if he wasn't there they would have been through they could have had an opportunity on goal to test Hessel once again and look at this for a good maneuver from Hertha Berlin Wagner crosses the ball in low and hard but Dominguez just getting in the way throwing his whole body in the way of that dangerous looking cross into the box this game was screaming out for a winner and I really thought it was going to be Hertha Berlin to get that second goal from Wagner. Brilliant volley, hit the post, unfortunately he was offside. There was just one final chance for Mönchengladbach, it really opened up for Traore. It was like Moses part in the Red Sea, the amount of space that he was given. There was one final chance though in the works for uh, Hertha Berlin and it had come from Stocker. A good effective shot on target but thankfully Hessel saved it, knocking that out for a corner. And the final whistle was blown, the game ended 1-1. Our last couple of fixtures, guys, they haven't been the best as we drop down to fourth. We've only got three games to go, but it's still very tight. We're ten points behind the league leaders. Not bothered about that now. As long as Mönchengladbach gets second or third come the end of the season, I will be happy. And, you know, we're only a point off that. Dortmund, they've played catch-up fantastically. You know, it wasn't long ago since I was saying, wow, look at Dortmund. They're all the way down in eighth or ninth. But it's just been so tight this season and that's what I like about the Bundesliga, it's so unpredictable and there's so many quality teams in the league which always, you don't know what you're going to get on the day when you, when you have to play these teams. We had to turn our attention to our next game which was at home against Bayer Leverkusen, such a crucial game, we really needed three points from this one as you saw with the league table they are level on points. If we can win this, we can pull away from them and focus on our last two games of the season. But it wasn't the start that I had hoped for. Bayer Leverkusen had made it 1-0 from that corner. And I thought, you know what, because they're scoring so early on, I'm going to see if I can take it. Take the ball up their half. Go it alone with Hazard. I did just that because I was so frustrated that we had gone behind so early on in this game. I wanted to get back on level terms and restart the game almost. And thankfully, it paid off Hazard making it 1-1. How it went in, wow. 
took a deflection off the keeper. It's such a tight angle as well because the defenders were were almost pushing me out of uh, out of play there, going for a, a goal kick. You can see um, I was surrounded by red shirts. There's like three, four players there. And they failed to make a challenge, so more for them. Max Cruiser with a fantastic shot, so powerful in it. It was going in, but the keeper pulled off a fantastic save. And Hazard again with another run of his own came close to getting his second of the game from that same angle that he got the first, that equaliser. At the half hour mark, Max Cruiser was forced out wide over to the left. I had to try and find a way to bring it in, maybe go for a cross or maybe go it alone. And Max Cruiser did go it alone. Had a good shot as well on target, but the keeper with another fantastic save. He was putting a stop to absolutely everything that came his way. It's almost as if he thought to himself, well, you've already scored one goal. I'm not letting in any more. Hazard was very unfortunate there on the volley. It would have been a very nice finish if he had found the, uh, the bottom left-hand corner with that volley. Just at the hour mark, though, Cruiser received a nice lob ball pass over the top of the defence, controlled it well, brought it down, took it into the box and hit it. It didn't fly into the top corner, it just rolled across the ground into the bottom right hand corner. A brilliant goal, which I, I really thought the goalkeeper was going to save. After all the chances that I've had, he couldn't save that one weak shot, would you say? It kind of looked weak, um, seeing that it just rolled across the ground. Probably should have passed it there to uh, Hagota, who was waiting in the centre, but... Hahn was offside, it was a good effective shot on target though and it made our intentions known that we were coming for more and Hagota here who just cannot stop scoring at the moment weaving in and out eventually made it three with just four minutes to go of the game so we would definitely come away as the winners and it's certainly a, a win that we needed here to pick ourselves up after the last couple of results going our way and I really did think we were going to be in for a challenge it was in the first half to be fair against Leverkusen but in the second half the floodgates completely opened for us and, and we just took the game by the horns and, and what a challenge from Rajkovic there before the final whistle just a bull hammer elbow to the side of the school to Rolfs completely taking him out he had to go off after that challenge and the final whistle was eventually blown we did come away with the three points with a 3-1 win over Bayer Leverkusen a team that were level on points with us in the league before that game even kicked off so I'm happy that we got the win there and that we've pulled away from them now with three points above them we just had to make sure that we had to win here away against Werder Bremen the only two games to go including this one and Werder Bremen at this point were in a very bad situation they were battling against relegation so obviously we were going to have to be careful of that challenge coming from them and you'll notice that Junozovic was in the side he will be joining us for next season you know the uh, the central attacking midfielder there in that number 10 role who I managed to sign on a pre-contract in the uh, the January transfer window looking forward to actually having him in our team I think he's going to be able to settle in just nicely. I think he's going to fill that, that space that Hazard is going to leave once he goes back to Chelsea, once his loan finishes here. And speaking of Hazard, if any of you guys didn't know, he's just recently signed a permanent deal with Mönchengladbach from Chelsea. He will not be returning to loan. So maybe that's something I can do in the summer, maybe bring in Hazard on a permanent deal. Hopefully I'm, I'm going to be given a bigger budget. If we finish in a, a very good position, if I qualify for the Champions League, it'd be nice to maybe get something like 20, 25 million. That would just be perfect to work with. Anyway, we got off to a good start in this game against Ferda Bremen. The first goal will come from a corner, finding the head of Santana, who put it into the back of the net, somehow looping it over the top of the keeper. How the keeper didn't save that, I don't know because it was so close. It was just there in in touching distance. He should have saved that, really. I'm sure his manager will be very, very disappointed with his performance there. A go to with a nice bit of skill here, taking the ball into the box. Should have found the back of the net there, but Wolf trying to redeem himself from that mishap he had earlier on in the game, which cost them to go a goal behind. And Hagota again, this time on target, feeding the ball through the legs of the goalkeeper. He couldn't be any more embarrassed in this game as Borussia Mönchengladbach extended their lead to two goals. Just before half-time, Werder Bremen completed a good attack and manoeuvre, but it would be Bartels completely screwing it up for them as he knocked it out for a goal kick on that volley. It was terrible. And Hessel there looking very sharp as he collected that ball with ease. 
uh, from Werder Bremen as the ball was whipped in. I looked to make it 3-0 here, but the ball went sailing over the goal from that shot from Hahn. A 2-0 win was good enough for me, though. Coming away with not only a clean sheet, but a good performance and, of course, three points. And with that, there is only one more game remaining of the Bundesliga this season. You can see here with the league table that we do climb to seconds, but we've got Dortmund following close behind. And after taking a look at the league table, I saw the headline that Borussia Mönchengladbach had landed a Euro League spot, but more importantly, we have landed a spot in next season's Champions League. So ecstatic over that. Amazing news. And you're not going to want to miss the next episode as I play the last game of this season in the Bundesliga. Hopefully it doesn't disappoint. Hopefully we're in for a good game. And with that, guys, I'm going to end it there. Hope you've all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one.